in the latter part of Matthew 27, or 7, I'm sorry, um, the wise and the foolish builders, it's called. And, uh, and then we'll get to sing that song again, just so you know. So uh, Ivan's going to be putting that on for us. upon the rock. Wise man built his house upon the rock. The rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the rock stood firm. Foolish man built his house upon the sand. Foolish man built his house upon the sand. Foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came tumbling down. Rains came down, and the floods came up, came up, up, up and the floods came up. Rains came down as the floods came up. It froze. Came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the sand went splat. <laughs> so build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessings will come down. Blessings come down as the prayers go up. Blessings come down as the prayers go up. Blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord. Build your house on the Lord. <laughs> so you're going to be singing that for the rest of the day and week, right? <laughs> what? I did, I turned it on, honey. Yeah, my tech down over there is just checking up on me. <clears throat> so Danny read Ephesians chapter 2, and, and as I, I thought about that, I, it, if you think about it, what he's talking about and who he's talking about is those who are in Christ Jesus. You got that? So he's talking to those who are in Christ Jesus. And it, he tells us that Christ Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. And in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Those that are in Christ, in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too, you, you too, he says, are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. So he's talking to the church. Um, I noticed uh, that guy over there that did the Lord's uh, Supper or the prayer this morning. He said, church. 
And, and, and I don't know, but one of the, the fellows from South Africa, in his whole lesson, he, he says, Church? Are you listening, church? And so this morning, he's talking about the church. But he's also talking about this spirit, that God lives by his spirit, that this spirit is living in our hearts and our minds. So try and relate everything we talk about this morning to that. Some of you have seen the series, The World, that the world may know. And I'm going to steal a little bit from that series, one in particular, where he talks about living stones. But I don't know if you knew or not, but he tells us that the promised land given to the people of Israel was not somewhere hidden away in the mountains. I'd love to be hidden away in the mountains, but God put the people of Israel on the crossroads of the world so the world could see them. Now think about that. It wasn't a quiet area that settled, that they settled in, but it was a busy world trade route. And just think about it, after living in the desert for 40 years, here God puts them in this place, and I'm sure a lot of them would have sooner lived in Rock Creek. I don't know if you know Rock Creek, B.C. He lived there for a year. So God knew what they needed. He knew where they needed to be and where people could see them. Something else that it, that it said in that uh, video is that tradition in the Middle East was when something of significant religious nature happened, you would take a stone and usually it was a, a very large stone and I should, uh, I should get out my uh, thing here. <laughs> usually it was a very large stone. And, uh, <clears throat> and it was a significant, a significant religious nature happened and you, you would take a stone and a large stone and you would stand it up in that place. And that would be a standing stone, but it, it ha would have significance. Remember, in Exodus 24, Moses, what did he do? He put up 12 of these standing stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob, I don't know if you remember, but Remember, he wrestled with the angel, he wrestled with God, and then in his dream, it, he dreamt about this ladder descending into heaven. And in Genesis 28, here's what it says. It says he was afraid. And then he says, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, he says. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning. I just, I, you know, it just makes me feel really bad when it talks about these people that rise early in the morning. But Jacob rose early in the morning and he took, that, took the stone that he had put under his head and he set it up as a pillar. Now, you know, when I first read this, I thought, well, you know, that'd have to be a pretty tiny stone, and why would you use a stone as a pillow, right? But I, but I think this was, this was a significant size stone. And he, he set it up, and he poured oil on its top, and then Jacob made a vow. He made a vow, and he said, if God will be with me, and will keep me on this journey that I take, and will give me food to eat and garments to wear, and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. So Peter goes on and he t talks about living stones. And Peter, I believe, is referring to these standing stones that we just talked about as living stones. First Peter chapter 2. He says, as you come to him, the living stone, Christ, 
rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him he says you also that's the church you and me like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ sounds a little familiar to Ephesians kind of a little bit like that but remember I want you to note Christ was precious to God but he was he was a reject as far as the world was concerned and you see it's God who puts the value on these stones it's God who puts the value on these stones you and me he says not the world because we are precious in God's sight remember that we're talking about life on the rock here and life on the rock knows that we are precious in God's sight Peter again is talking about us and as being stones added to the cornerstone Christ in Christ's building which is the church think about that as we read further uh, Peter says in 1st Peter in verse 12 he says live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits so life on the rock means that we are living good lives to glorify God and so in reflection on these stones Peter says what those were you are so each of you he says each of you are living stones being built into a spiritual house and each of you are standing or living stones he says so live such good lives among the pagans that they may see your good works and glorify your God and and that's exactly what the stone did didn't it the stone did that it, it was like it was like people would see the stone and they'd ask well uh, what happened here what's the deal and someone would say well let me tell you about what God did let me tell you about what God did we are a stone we are a stone that represents something significant that God did God puts us in the world so that the rest of the world sees us and through us comes to know him so we are called to be standing stones no no we are called to be living stones think about that wouldn't it be neat if whenever people saw us just by our godly life that people would say your God must be really something else remember what Jacob said how awesome is this place how awesome is this place as awesome as this rock this stone the cornerstone <clears throat> and the the cornerstone and the building the church that is being built around it think about that Christ is the cornerstone and the church is the building that's being built around it there are those that would really like to tear it down they reject the cornerstone but think about it the cornerstone stands firm I don't know if you've seen some of these buildings that have been destroyed but it seems like usually what's left is the cornerstone the basic foundation so in Matthew 
21, it said, Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So life on the rock, it's marvelous in our eyes because we have the cornerstone. Again in 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, A stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble. Here's why they stumble. They stumble because they disobey the message. So Peter cites Isaiah 8.14 is what he's citing here. And he's referring to Jesus as the stone. As the stone of stumbling and the rock that causes falling. And in Isaiah verse 13 he says this stone and rock is the Lord Almighty. So he asks us to obey. So life on the rock means obedience. And Paul reminds Timothy, he talks to Timothy, that the church is God's family and it is here that we can find the truth. So life on the rock means we have the truth. Compare this to the world that stumbles. And they stumble because, why again? They disobey the truth of the message of truth. So again, Paul, as he talked to Timothy, he said, you're going to know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the foundation of the truth. The truth. So I'm going to say this, church, <laughs> Remember that it is you and me. We are the church. And this is why we need to be talking about the truth together. Often to each other. Praying and living in the spirit of truth. Praying and living in the spirit of truth. And, and you ladies are, are in for a treat, another treat. No, I guess you heard it last Tuesday, right? No, you're in for a treat this Tuesday again. And in that lesson, it talks about the spirit works on the inside of us. Works on the inside out. The world works on the outside in. Think about that. The, the spirit works from the inside out. The truth. The truth. And here's what Isaiah had to say about the rock. <clears throat> He says, so this is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation that one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. Life on the rock means we don't have to panic. So do you have panic attacks? Any of you have panic attacks? Yeah. <laughs> so when you rely on the rock, guess what? You will never be stricken with panic. He says in Deuteronomy, he is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just and faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and just as he, so we can always trust the rock. We can always trust the rock. So let us fit, put our feet solid on the rock. So life on the rock means our feet are solid on the rock. In Psalms he says, he lifted me 
out of the slimy pit. Out of the mud and the mire, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. So if life on the rock means we have a firm place to stand. I wanted you to turn to Matthew chapter 7. And uh, prior to the wise and the foolish builders, uh, Jesus is giving a whole pile of parables here. Uh, he talks about treasures in heaven. He talks about not worrying. He talks about judging either others. He talks about seeking, asking and seeking and knocking. He talks about the narrow and the wide gates. He talks about the tree and its fruits. Uh, you can go back and, and he talks about fasting. He talks about prayer, uh, giving to the, all the things that when we live on the rock, that Jesus is asking us to do and be a part of. And again, I'm just going to read, starting in verse 4. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, so he's, he's already given a whole bunch of words, right? He's talked about all kinds of words. And he says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and yet it, it did not fall. And why didn't it fall? Because it had its foundation on the rock. And we can talk about the foolish man, but we don't, we don't want to go there, right? <laughs> we want to be the wise man that built this house on the rock. So in Philippians, in closing, I just want to, to talk a little bit about the life that is worthy of the gospel. A life that is worthy of the gospel, and that's life on the rock. Whatever happens, he says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then Paul, Paul says, he says, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel of church. We need to stand together. Battles with Satan. It's not with each other. We need to stand together. So let's kind of rephrase that just a little. So then, when Christ comes and sees us, he will know that we stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Amen, church? Amen. Let it be. Let's let it be.